Um, I would just like to echo Mark's um, welcome and introduction, particularly to our colleagues who are joining us uh, from the uh, from across the EU. It would be nice to be able to welcome you in person, um, but um, obviously we are working in very different times and. I think hopefully by now many of us will be used to um, using this sort of technology to engage in conversations with everyone. So you are very, very welcome today. In terms of the format for our webinar, um, um, I will just be following on uh, Mark's technical introduction by giving colleagues um, an overview of the Eisen program. Um, we will then move on to a bit of an inspiration session. Um, we're going to hear from Professor Joe Rycroft, who, who may be familiar to many people um, who are on the webinar. Uh, Joe is a leading international implementation scientist, and she's going to share with us some of her experiences of building a career in implementation research. The reason for doing that is that we really want to engage in some conversation with Jay. Um, specifically about the sorts of things that we can do collectively through our network to increase the capability for implementation research, not only within our partner countries, um, but across the EU as well. So we will be asking some questions along the way to get a sense of what you think would be helpful in terms of um, the design and the delivery of both masters and doctoral level programs in implementation research. So we are grappling with a, a new technology, but we would like to be flexible. Um, so we're very happy um, for you to um, use the chat function throughout um, the um, webinar just to, to raise questions. Um, I will, Joe will inevitably give you the opportunity to ask questions during the webinar, in which case you might like to use the raise hand function. Mark will be keeping an eye on all of those sorts of things so that we don't lose any questions. Um, so if, if you if you either don't have the opportunity to ask a question um, in the particular slot within the webinar, then please do use the um, chat function to make sure that we don't lose that. Um, there will be an opportunity to mop up questions as we go through. Um, but what I will be doing now is just very much setting the scene, giving you an overview of the ISM project, which I hope is going to interest you in the work that we're trying to uh, accomplish and provide you with an opportunity to engage uh, in our work over the months and years ahead. When I, um, I, I mentioned that we would like to get from you um, a sense of um, ideas as to how we can increase the capability for implementation research. So um, at various times, we will be posing some discussion questions um, for you to focus on either in the chat or uh, in terms of asking questions. So you will see these uh, um, at a number of times um, on, on the webinar, but I thought it would be helpful just to get, give you a sense of what they are now. So the sorts of things that we would like you to think about would um, things that you think we should be paying special attention to in a graduate training program around implementation. What the different knowledge and skills that are relevant for postgraduate training and implementation research. And what are the challenges and opportunities associated with an international postgraduate program in implementation research, because our, our ISM project is, is very much uh, an international program. It may be that implementation research is absolutely new to you, and that's absolutely fine. You're very welcome. All are welcome to the world of, of implementation research, in which case your questions might be more about what implementation research is all about. What I would just like you to do, um, just to spend a minute or two, um, is using the chat function to identify one aspect of implementation science that you would like to know more about or have greater confidence in. Um, as I say, that might be just that you want to know more about implementation science, that it is a, a new topic. Um, but if you do have some experience in the field, um, what would the one thing that you would like to know more about or have greater confidence in be? So 
So I'm hoping that everybody now is clicking on the chat function uh, towards the bottom. Thank you. So I know that Jenny has found the chat function. So questions around reporting implementation science methods in manuscripts, the impact of implementation on patient outcomes, the challenges and opportunities of working across organizational and professional boundaries, the practical and logistical and, and other challenges of doing that, the sorts of tools and methods associated with implementation science, the ambidextrous organization, that sounds absolutely fascinating. Colleagues wanting to know more about de-implementation, and that is a topic that is particularly close to my heart as we write up a project report on de-implementation. So to see that colleagues do have a real interest in this area, um, and this is a not only is it helpful in terms of getting you to use the spam function and so that we know everybody can can engage, but again, it's helpful for us in terms of knowing the sorts of things that colleagues are interested in. So do please keep those. So please do keep those um, questions coming through on the chat function. We will um, we will come back to those um, as we go through today. I just wanted to share some thoughts uh, as to why we have decided to concentrate the development of a, an educational network around implementation science. Um, it always strikes me as um, whenever I teach the issue of implementation, particularly to undergraduates um, who are just beginning their immersion within health and care, that actually um, the understanding that there is a gap between evidence of what works and actually what happens in relation to the organisation delivery of patient care, the gaps there can be um, quite concerning to people. I know that many of those, uh, many of us in this webinar will be used to the challenge of the gap between evidence of what works and what happens in the, the reality of the organization and delivery of patient care. And there are some estimates, admittedly, um, some um, that, that are um, some years um, out of date, but there are estimates that between 20 to percent of patients in our European health systems receive evidence, uh, receive interventions that are um, inconsistent with the scientific evidence of what works. And colleagues will be familiar with the consequences of um, implementation, particularly as, as it also relates to the um, efficiency and the use of scarce resources within our health and care services. So the challenge of delivering health and care that is evidence-based is a long-standing challenge. It is perhaps a wicked problem in that many of us will have been working on this agenda for some time, but it is an important agenda. It is an agenda which requires um, more evidence base, evidence of how to close the gap between evidence and practice, and more colleagues with um, higher level skills in both implementation and implementation science. So that was the reasoning behind um, our ambition to set up a European work for colleagues who were interested in, in education around implementation science. Um, the partners for the Eisen program um, are out on this slide. So um, Karolinska Institute in Sweden, Dalarna University in Sweden, um, Coimbra in Portugal, Canterbury Christchurch University in England, where I am, and colleagues from Western Norway University of Applied Sciences. Um, and I pay particular attention to um, Professor Tuner Ellen, who is the project lead for the um, Eisen um, project. So our ambition, as it is for all of those who work in related fields, our ambition is ultimately to improve the experiences and lives of citizens with Europe. And by experience, we mean the full range of impacts from the health and care services that are provided. Um, so that um, our focus is on ensuring that those care, health and care services are underpinned, not only by scientific knowledge, but all forms of knowledge 
professional wisdom, ethical knowledge, and the artistry of health and care as well, but making sure that that knowledge and evidence gets closer um, to the point um, of care and service delivery. There are um, many definitions of implementation science out there. Um, in fact, there are many different concepts within this field. Um, colleagues may be familiar with phrases like knowledge translation, knowledge utilization, knowledge mobilization, evidence-based practice, um, lots of um, different but common um, ways of thinking about how we study and close the gap between evidence and practice. Um, one of the definitions that colleagues might um, be perhaps most familiar with, it certainly is one that is widely cited, um, is the one that is on this slide, implementation research being the scientific study of methods that promote the systematic uptake of research findings and other evidence-based practices into routine tests, and then hence ultimately to improve the quality and effectiveness of health services. So our focus isn't necessarily on research into the effectiveness of healthcare interventions per se, it is research into methods which ensure that evidence-based practice um, happens as much as possible. The field of implementation science um, gives us an evidence base. There is an evidence base between across different techniques, different strategies that we can use to close this gap. Some of the interventions that colleagues may be familiar with would be things like um, facilitation, audit and feedback, leadership, education, all of those implementation um, interventions do have an evidence base um, which we can use to inform um, our work um, as managers, as clinicians, as policy makers um, in lots of different ways. Implementation science is a really rich field. Um, there are lots of different theories, models and frameworks that come from different disciplines perhaps psychology and sociology being um, some of the most influential disciplines um, that, that we've had within the area so far. But there are a plethora of theories, models and frameworks that we can use to, to think about, to plan, um, to design and to undertake and evaluate our implementation work. I think perhaps more interestingly, the field at the moment um, is the attention that is being paid on the methods, the research methods that we use in healthcare and how we can do research into different healthcare interventions in a way that we actually create knowledge that is implementable. There is argument that if we develop an evidence base for a clinical intervention and then think about implementation, then in some respects, um, things are too late. So there is an interest now, for example, in co-production um, where, or knowledge, um, uh, integrated knowledge translation, for example, where we can think about ways of doing research uh, such that we create knowledge and evidence um, that is um, more implementable than not. Um, the way that we have conceptualized our uh, approach to implementation um, within the ISM program is to think about the work implementation and research implementation within both a master's degree framework and an, um, and an, implement, and an implementation research in a doctoral level framework. Inevitably, there will be some overlap of content um, between the two programs, but essentially we're designing a master's degree program which will really help people to develop um, advanced level skills and knowledge in the practice and art of implementation. Our PhD program is very much focusing on the, the art and skills and techniques associated with implementation research. Um, but as I say, there is quite a significant overlap um, between the two, which is both challenging and interesting. But that, that is the way that we um, are approaching implementation within our Eisen program. 
So we are developing um, a PhD level course uh, and an MSc level course. I will tell you a little bit more about how you can uh, get engaged and involved in those programs at the end of today's webinar. Um, programs are due to be piloted um, over the um, remainder of the project over the next um, 10 to 12 months um, and hopefully it'll be a, a good opportunity for colleagues across the EU um, to get involved in those programs. We are, as we are today, using perhaps some of the opportunities um, associated with technology-enabled learning. Um, and this was something that we had thought about long before COVID-19 came along. Um, our challenge and opportunity really was to, to think through how we could design a program using technology to enable students not only within their own country to develop knowledge and skills around implementation, but actually to work together across countries to share experience, to share knowledge, to share understanding of context, um, to really um, advance um, our knowledge and understanding within the field. So the programmes themselves very much reflect advances in technology-enabled learning in terms of the design and the delivery of the two programmes, as you'll see. There have been a number of stages to the ISM project. Um, I understand that you will have had an opportunity to download an infographic which outlines some of the earlier work that we have done to date. That has included um, a scoping review of the literature to develop a curriculum framework across um, implementation science. We have been engaging um, within country stakeholders to really hone down on those areas of the curriculum framework that we wish to take forward into both our master's and our doctoral level um, programmes. As I say, those programmes will be piloted um, over the remainder of the project. And this is one of a series of multiplier events where some across the EU will have an opportunity to engage in and learn more um, about our programme. So some of the findings, I'm quite happy to, to share some of these today. There, there will be a publication soon um, that builds on the infographic that you've already had. But some of the um, um, work that we have done to date um, has highlighted, for example, the knowledge and skills that implementation scientists need to have um, from across the multidisciplinary and professional backgrounds of colleagues um, that work within the field. As I say, implementation is a really rich field. It draws its ideas not only from psychology and sociology, but more recently from the design sciences, from arts, humanities and aesthetics, from ethics, from engineering. Um, it's a really broad and rich field, um, which enables us to shine perhaps new lights on some very persistent and wicked problems. So the our implementation career are very multidisciplinary, both um, from an um, academic, um, but also from a professional um, perspective. The orientation to the background approaches, theories and methods is absolutely crucial, as perhaps you would expect. And that is a feature of those are features of both of our programmes. What has come through there is the set of values and the personal qualities and skills, particularly in systems thinking, which um, are associated with um, effectiveness within implementation. Um, and, and again, those need to be really evident within our postgraduate programs at both MSc and PhD level. And the consensus of our stakeholders is so far the emphasis on the need for the really rich contextual knowledge and a, perhaps a very sophisticated approach to personal political leadership that is required to make some headway within the field. And that I think is a real opportunity of the ISM programme, that not only will students um, be able to develop a really in-depth understanding of the contextual factors that shape implementation within their own health and social care systems, but will be able to share and scale up that knowledge across um, the different systems that, represent, that are represented by the different um, countries that are involved within our work. So as I say, there will be some piloting of the MSc and PhD courses. 
the sorts of things that are planned in those include access to synchronous and asynchronous expertise and teaching because we are a network of implementation scientists we're able to draw on that expertise and make sure that it is available to students it will include pods and vodcasts and video abstracts interactive webinars such as today around core curriculum themes discussion boards self and peer assessment of learning and all sorts of different types of social media that i think perhaps many of us in the eyes and network are are learning about on a on a daily basis it, it, it certainly is a, a really exciting and and growing area so we do really want to co-produce um, our curricula we do want to co-produce the programs and the products that come from the eyes and program um, so we do really want you to help us by perhaps sharing your experiences and ambitions around implementation and not only that but also your experiences and preferences around transnational or technology enabled learning so i'm hoping that there is a broad um, experience um, and perhaps no experience within the room no experience is really helpful you can ask us some really searching questions about what we're doing and, and how we plan to do it um, so we very much look forward to hearing your feedback as we go through. Um, I say that there would be some discussion questions. We're going to visit these discussion questions once we've heard an inspiration session. I know that Professor Rycroft Malone will be inspiring and will get us to think about all sorts of things that are important in terms of building um, a career in implementation research.